welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will be learning about the trial frame. It might seem like a simple instrument, but it plays a very intricate role during subjective refraction. A little bit of misalignment and you might end up with a situation where you have done a great refraction but the patient still complains or hits the prescription when trial framed. Well, let's explore its various parts and the role they play. If you have noticed, the trial frame has some markings and knobs. The markings are in the form of a cross. The horizontal line must be aligned in a way that it cuts horizontally through the center of the pupil. To achieve this form of centration, you need to adjust the nose rest of the trial frame. This can be done using the knob dedicated for this purpose. Similarly, the vertical line must be aligned in a way that it cuts vertically through the center of the pupil. To achieve this alignment, you need to adjust the interpupillary distance, which is controlled by the same knob that controls the nose rest. These alignments ensure that the patient is viewing the vision chart through the center of the trial lens that you have placed in front of his or her eye. Next is the temple adjustment and adding a pantoscopic tilt to the trial frame. The pantoscopic tilt is the amount that the frame front is tilted with respect to the plane of the face. This will allow the trial frame prescription to be as close as possible to the final prescription in the frame that the patient chooses. To avoid adversely affecting or reducing the optical performance of the lens, for every millimeter that the optical center of the lens is below the line of sight, two degrees of pantoscopic tilt is added to the frame. While prescribing progressive addition lenses, using a frame with an adequate pantoscopic tilt brings the lower half of the lens closer to the eyes. When the eyes are turned downwards for near viewing, the reading width increases. Next up are the compartments of the trial frame. Some of the trial frames have three and some have four compartments. The first compartment we are looking at is nearest to the eye and is used to place high powered lenses. Usually the plus lenses or the near addition lenses used to correct presbyopia. It is essential to place these lenses here because we want to keep them as close to the eye's surface as possible. Increased vertex distance increases the power of plus lenses and in turn increases the magnification that they cause. So, for example, when this lens is held at the optimum vertex distance, say approximately 13 mm, its power is plus 2 diopters. When we move the lens farther from the eye, its power gradually increases and now it might be somewhere around plus 2.5 diopters or plus 3 diopters. We need the vertex distance formula to calculate this. Hence, you should always try to keep any type of lens as close to the eyes as possible. In the second compartment of the trial frame, we place the spherical lenses. The third compartment of the trial frame must be exclusively used for cylindrical lenses because unlike the spherical lenses, these need to be adjusted precisely on an axis. Hence, the axis dial lets us know which axis the cylinder is placed at. The fourth compartment we are looking at is placed farthest from the eyes. This can be used to place the occluder or even some of the other accessories like the prisms and the filters. This compartment allows accessories to be added even for those who have a prescription and need some kind of lenses in the other compartments. Avoid these common trial frame mistakes to ensure your patient is looking through your intended prescription and not seeing a blurry mess. Ensure that the vertex distance is optimum and not too large. Ophthalmic frames are designed to have a vertex distance of about 13 mm. If the trial frame sits too far from the patient's eyes, it modifies the prescription they are looking through. Especially if he or she is a high myope or a hyperope. Make sure that the pantoscopic angle is accurate. The bottom of the lenses should be slightly slanted towards the face at an angle similar to what the final spectacle frame will have. This will ensure the patient has accurate vision with the final pair of spectacles that are made. So dear viewers, having learnt about the trial case in our previous video and about the trial frame in this video, I hope you are able to use both of them together successfully in your practices. Mm -hmm.